the conversation into this one um, thing that I love to do with all the guests that we have on Political Hope is also to kind of do a little bit of um, planting a seed of, of what what is Charles doing and what is Charles up to if if it's the glass ceiling. So in the next three years, what, what where do you see yourself and in the context of also building political hope in the world? And what, what is the best that could happen in the next few years that you imagine? The best. <laughs> Hmm. what would you be a part of what would you be would you be facilitating would you be yeah you know i'm getting uh, a little bit uh weary of what i'm doing um i've been writing about this kind of stuff for a long time and you know i put stuff out there uh that's really a call for peace for truth and peace and i'm getting all kinds of attacks you know and 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 like it's kind of getting to me you know and i'm not i'm not doing this to gain approval or popularity i don't care that much about the size of my audience but um sometimes i get the feeling that i need to uh, do something else um and direct the bulk of my energy just to something else and maybe it's um you know, I have a, an idea for a screenplay. Um, I have nice. this. Uh, I, I, I have been doing more and more kind of like behind the scenes stuff and advising. Um, I think I can be really useful there. And then there's something I want to build um, that. It's um, kind of a temple, huh. um, but mostly outdoors. I haven't, this is the first time I've mentioned this in, in, in any kind of public way, but it's um, kind of a outpost of the future into the present that where people would go and receive an activation, not necessarily or probably not at all from me, but from the place itself. Mm. I guess I want to exercise powers beyond merely, you know, persuasion and logic, even though I don't think that's mostly what I do already. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm not, um, I'm not only speaking from the head, but I don't know. Like I feel, you mentioned glass ceiling. I feel like there is there is kind of a glass ceiling that um, I, I I don't have. Here's another thing. Like I don't have actually a really clear idea of of what lies on the other side of my impatience and dissatisfaction and feeling of limitation with what I'm doing right now. And sometimes you have to go through an in between territory. You don't necessarily step right onto the new thing when you let go of the old thing. There's usually a period of turbulence of uncertainty, of unknowing, of inactivity sometimes, um, of dissent, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, other cultures have room for this or had room for this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe at a certain point in your life, you go on a walkabout. Mm -hmm. So maybe I need to go on a walkabout now, and then what is mine to do becomes more clear. Yeah, and in, in, uh, where I come from in India, we call it udasi where you go on like a, a walking, just go, <laughs> like a thorough, thorough mm -hmm. walk. Mm -hmm. um, How long yeah. do those usually last? I mean, some, some of the guys who did it, they did it, they would go for like several years. Yeah. Some of them, some of them go for like a month or two. Right. So, depends, right. On, depends on how you, how, what you can finagle, you know, with your commitment, responsibility. Right. right. Yeah. Like that appeals to me. And then like, there's part of me that's like, you can't afford to do that now. You know, things are so, intense you know you're got to be in action but um that's always true you know but that, but then at the same time you got people like Sadhguru who just like traveled all across like europe and africa and middle east and kept going also with what he was you know his, his yeah. purposes so yeah. who's making the rules charles who's making the rules <laughs>